14.2, declining balance method. When we say declining balance method, we're talking about what's referred to as accelerated depreciation. Using straight line, we took the total depreciable amount and divided it evenly throughout its useful life. There may be a certain circumstance or situation where it may make sense to use an accelerated method. And an accelerated method means that we are actually writing off more of the cost in the early years and less in the later years. You're not depreciating more overall, it's gonna be the same amount. The difference is that declining balance will depreciate faster or more dollars in the early years and less in the later years. Let's see, often it's referred to as double declining balance and sometimes for tax purposes, it's referred to as the 200% method. When we use this method, we first have to de uh, determine what is the double declining rate, balance rate. So what is the rate? If you recall, we computed the straight line rate based upon the number of years. When we talk about double declining balance rate, we're simply meaning when we say double, we mean two, double, twice. And really when it's all said and done, it's twice the straight line rate. So as an example here, we'll look at this um, table here. It says, if we have years of life of three, then as we discussed in the previous section, three years means you're writing off 33.33% or one third every year using the straight line rate. When we're, when we're using the double declining balance method, we were, we're gonna double that. So 33.33% times two is 66.67%. Under, the, under four years, the straight line rate was 25%. One fourth, one fourth every year is 25%. We learned that in the previous section. In this section, we take that 25% and we multiply it by two. So the double declining rate is 50%. Five, we had examples on five. We saw that five is a 20% rate. That was the, uh, the extra, extra example problem we worked on, 20%. We double that for the double declining balance and we come up with 40%. And eight years was 12.5%, doubling that would be 25% and so forth all the way through all the years. So you're taking the straight line rate and multiplying it by two to come up with a double declining balance rate. When we're looking at finding out the amount of depreciation now, it's actually a little simpler now. We're gonna take the depreciation amount, that's gonna be the depreciation, what we're actually, this, this is what I refer to as the annual depreciation. And the way we come up with that is we take the double declining balance rate, which is what we just figured out how to come up with that, and we multiply it by the declining balance. Let's take a look at the first example here. Capital Curb and Concrete purchased a small portable storage building for $8,100. It is expected to have a life of 10 years and at which time it will have no salvage value. So this is gonna be fully depreciated. We're gonna depreciate all $8,100 and it has a 10 year useful life. So we know the way we compute the double declining rate is we take the straight line rate and multiply it by two. So to come up with the straight line rate, we need to take one and we need to divide that by the useful life. So in our example here, the useful life is 10 years. So every year we're going to be dividing it by one tenth. So the straight line rate then in terms of a percent is computed, is computed by taking one and dividing it by 10. Now you're going to get one tenth in terms of a percent, it is 10%. So now we can go in and compute the double declining rate now because we know that the straight line rate is 10%. Multiply it by two. So 10% times two means that our double declining rate is 20%.
Okay, so the straight line depreciation rate for property is 10 years is 10%. We figured that out. Therefore, the double declining balance is twice that or 20%. Now, every year, the amount of depreciation is going to be different. For the straight line, it was equal every year, but for double declining balance, it will be different. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the 20% and we're going to multiply it by the cost less accumulated depreciation. So then to compute what the double declining balance depreciation amount will be, we need to take the book value and multiply it by the DDB rate. We have the DDB rate already, we computed it, it's 20%. So that's gonna be consistent. So now we can then conclude that every year that we want to depreciate, we'll take the book value and multiply it by 20%. So every year we just need to figure out what is the book value. To determine the book value, you simply take the cost and subtract the accumulated depreciation. So we're going to create a table here that gives us kind of a feel for how this all works. We're going to take the cost, the accumulated depreciation, we'll determine what the book value is, and then we'll take that book value and multiply it by the rate, and then we come up with the amount. So for year one, and the cost, by the way, is going to be the same every year, $8,100. So we'll plot eight ones, eight one zero zero. So $8,100. The accumulated depreciation to date is zero, so there is no accumulated depreciation. So to compute the book value, we simply take the cost minus the accumulated depreciation. So the book value is $8,100. The double declining rate, we figured that to be 20%. And so to compute the depreciation in year one, we're taking the book value of 8,100 and multiplying it by the DDB rate of 20%. So for year one, the depreciation will be $1,620. For year two, the cost is gonna be the same. However, the accumulated depreciation is gonna be Whatever we've depreciated up into the prior year, so it started off as zero, and we depreciated 1620 for that year one. So in year two, our accumulated depreciation before depreciation for this year is 1620. So now we can comp recompute our book value, 6480. The rate doesn't change. It is 20% every year. And now we'll take the book value and multiply it by 20%. So our second year of depreciation will be equal to $1,296. It's gonna be depreciated over 10 years. So the cost is $8,100. That will be the same. In fact, we'll go ahead and carry that down because it's gonna be the same every year. The accumulated depreciation is all based upon the pri uh, what we came up with before. It was 1620 that had been accumulated before year two. Then we added year two to it. So now, as of year three, the accumulated depreciation is 2916. The book value, we simply take the costs, subtract the accumulated depreciation, and we come up with 5184. 5184 multiplied by 20% gives us 1037. And you can see every year, the amount of depreciation actually declines. And this will work all the way up to where we get to year nine. In year 10, we have to find a way to get the accumulated depreciation to be equal to whatever the depreciable amount is. Since we had no salvage value we were gonna depreciate, we simply know that we need to depreciate the difference between whatever the cost is and whatever accumulated depreciation has already incurred. So that's gonna be 1359. When we get to year 10, it gets a little bit tricky. We could, we, we can't compute what accumulated depreciation is, and so far that would make it 7,013. Uh, and then we could compute the book value, but in the end, it's actually gonna be irrelevant. For the, prior, for the end, the very last year becomes a plug because we know that we want 
we want the book value to be equal to whatever the salvage value is. Now the salvage value in this case was gonna be zero. So we have to find a way to figure out how much we need to depreciate in the last year and so this becomes a plug. Um, we know we need it to be $8,100. We've depreciated 7,013 so far. So in year 10, we're gonna be writing off $1,087. When we figure out the total amount that's been depreciated, we should come up with $8,100. Okay, so the question then says in the first year, what's the amount of depreciation? The answer here is 1620, and that's what we come up with to 1620. In year two, the second year, 1296, and we came up with 1296 here. And what is the, the book value at the end of the second year? The book value, we compute 5184, which is what we came up with here at the end of the second year. It, it actually carried over from the prior year, but it's 5184. Capital curb and concrete bought a new pickup truck at a cost of 21,500. It estimated the truck will have a useful life of five years, at which time it will have a salvage value or a trade-in value of $3,500. Prepare a depreciation schedule using the double declining balance method. Okay, we've already actually done something like this, but there are a couple of differences here. The first thing is the depreciation rate. Five years. Five years means we've got to change up our thought process here. So under the declining balance, we have to figure out what is the double declining rate, which means we take our straight line rate and we multiply it by two. Well, in this case, the straight line rate will be one divided by the useful life. The useful life in this case is five years. So we plug in five here. And that means that the straight line rate is 20%, which we've done before, one fifth is 20%. But now we're gonna double it for the double declining rate, which means we take the, we'll take the 20%, multiply it by two, and that means our double declining rate is now equal to 40%. Okay, so now we have to figure out what the depreciation, double declining balance depreciation amount is. And that's gonna be equal to whatever the book value is and multiplied by the DD rate, DDB rate, which we've already figured that to be 40%, 40%. So now we can go ahead and come up with that depreciation schedule that we've done before. In the first year, we're gonna take the cost. What was the cost? The cost was, 21,500. Up until this point, the accumulated depreciation was zero. So that meant that before we do any depreciation, the book value is equal to the cost. The double declining rate is 40%. And so then the amount is gonna be the book value multiplied by the double declining balance rate of 40%. So the first year will be $8,600. The cost is gonna be same all the way through the entire, every year, so that carries down. Accumulated depreciation before the depreciation in year two will be whatever the accumulated depreciation was for the prior period, plus the prior period depreciation amount, which is $8,600. So. Up until year two, the accumulated depreciation was $8,600. So the book value before the depreciation in year two is $12,900. Now we're gonna take that and we're gonna multiply that by 40% and that should give us 5,160. For year three, we're gonna figure out that the uh, accumulated depreciation is taking 8,600 that had been previously the accumulated depreciation, we then add the year two depreciation to that. So after year two was over, the accumulated depreciation was 13,760. We're gonna use that amount for year three computations, which means that our book value now can be computed as 7740. Our depreciation rate is 40%. And now the depreciation amount is 3,096. And that's gonna carry all the way through year four. But here again, year five, the last year in any double declining balance 
computation is always a plug. And the question is, is how much do we need? So let's go ahead and figure out, well, how much accumulated depreciation do we have so far? Looks like it's 18,714. So uh, before we do, we, we still have to target whatever our um, depreciable amount is. So we're gonna take the cost, which was 21,500, less the salvage value, Salvage value was given to us to be $3,500. Okay, so that then gives us the depreciable amount. And the way we do that is we take the cost and we subtract the salvage value, we end up with 18,000. So we want the total amount to be depreciated to be 18,000. Well, we got a problem. At, in year four, we actually crossed over. We had 16,000 that was accumulated depreciation, and when we do the computation, it's another 1858. But by doing that, we end up depreciating more than what we were supposed to. We're only supposed to depreciate $18,000. So that means we have to adjust, we have to adjust the amount to be depreciated based upon how much we have remaining. So if we want $18,000 to be fully depreciated, to be completely depreciated, and we've already depreciated 16,856, that difference is 1144. So now, after year four, our accumulated depreciation is 18,000. We can't go above 18,000 because that's what our depreciable amount is, 18,000. Therefore, in year five, so we've adjusted year four to make sure we don't go over, and in year five, there's no room for anything more. So we know that the book value will be $3,500. You could bring the rate down, but it really doesn't matter because there's not gonna be any more depreciation since we already took care of it all the way in year four, all right? So let's go ahead and take a look at the solution here. Looks like we have $8,600, 86, 5160, 5160, 3096, 3096, 1144, I showed you how we got that, and then zero for the fifth year, zero for the fifth year. So you can take a look at how they did it, compare that to how we did it on the uh, spreadsheet. It follows the same logic, it's just lined up a little bit different. So whichever way works best for you, that's what you could use. The next part of the section shows a graph of how double declining works relative to the straight line method. You can read through that. And that completes 4.2.